Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, hopefully this video finds everybody doing okay. Um, I apologize for the break in videos. Uh, for those of you who lost, watched the last video, uh, you know why. Um, yeah, it's been a rough couple of weeks, but uh, in the, you know, I've been plugging along in the background and uh, there's some stuff I have not recorded. Uh, today is gonna be a little bit of a catch up and an update for where we're at today and uh, what the plan is for moving forward on uh, Ecto. I had a handful of uh, orders that need to get pushed up for customers and so that was uh, main priority and now we're back to super mega fun personal project time. So um, without further ado, here's where we are with, uh, with Ecto currently. Um, Chrome is probably half done. You know, both the front and rear bumpers are done. Uh, side skirt is done. Door handles are done. Um, I'm still waiting on parts on printers. So the way it stands right now, uh, the 4Max is down. The i3 Mega is down. The uh, Both of the Fusion 3 F410s are down. Uh, the only printer that's actually running is my uh, CR10. And... Uh, I spent the day fiddle faddling with it yesterday, and I just cannot uh, get a layer to stick to save my life. I'm having issues with uh, getting everything uh, leveled, and uh, I just uh, I'm pulling my hair out. I don't I don't know what's going on with it. So for all intents and purposes, it's basically uh, unusable for the moment. So um, once parts show up, theoretically Monday, um, it'll be maintenance time and getting things back up and running, getting everything dialed back in, and then uh, we'll be back to printing parts. Um, I'm also waiting on uh, more Chrome to show up. Uh, for those of you who have been asking uh, what I've been doing for the Chrome, um, first and foremost, like your main paint, you know, if you decide to, to do a project like this, um, it's a whole different animal when you, when you are working and painting uh, projects that are um, extraordinarily detailed, don't have large planes and, you know, need to be overly weathered. You can get away with murder on your post-processing. The problem is that once you start doing a project this size, you now have these absolutely massive planes that you have to take into account. And it just takes a heck of a lot more work, A, to fill your seams and to layer enough to where those those seams are no longer visible, as well as your print layers. You've got to get those completely out of the equation. And that sucker just has to be buttery smooth in order for your final top coat to look good. And it's one of those where, you know, it's all up to you. But if you want it to look good, if you want it to look right, if you want it to look scale, you just have to put the, uh, the elbow work into it. And that's part of why I keep pushing ABS for folks that are doing models like this. It's so much easier to sand in post-process. I can't even imagine doing this with PLA. Uh, I, I'll just shoot myself in the face first. It's just, it's not worth the hassle. But even with that, as you guys have seen with the progress moving, moving forward, um, it's a lot of layers. I think at this point, this thing has got uh, three layers of, uh, of Bondo um, that have been added and then subtracted back down, added and subtracted back down. It's got another four layers of primer. It's got uh, three layers of uh, top coat in the gloss white. Um, there again, the first layer wasn't happy with it. You know, I thought I was good to go and I wasn't. And it just boils down to being overly critical and anal retentive of your own work. Um, so that got sanded back down. Uh, everybody saw the junkyard version. I totally dug that junkyard version. It caught me off guard, but man, I think I want to build another one of these at the same scale. Do it to junkyard unrestored, like no tires, sitting in the dirt before they haul it out to bring it to this little piece of, uh, of perfection. Um, I'm super excited about that just because 99% of the time I like building old, used, weathered looking things. And this thing will be weathered, but it'll be like, hey, I've been rolling through the streets of New York City and we've got, you know, a little bit of uh, muck sprayed up on the car, not 
this thing has been through, you know, hellfire. So, uh, top coat, super, super, super important to have that finish as buttery smooth as possible. And then of course you come to the chrome and this stuff is absolutely phenomenal, but at the end of the day, it will only look as good as the subsurface. And, and if anything, it actually needs to be sanded to a finer and tighter tolerance than your paint does simply because with this, you're only doing like one coat. You only need one coat. Now that being said, like with most things on this project, I got to admit, man, I have underestimated what I would actually need to complete it. Um, electronics wise, no big deal. Um, filament wise, I think, uh, you know, I've been printing uh, typical um, two bottom layers, anywhere from three to five top layers, uh, three exterior uh, perimeters, and on average, 15% infill. And I'm about, uh, I think, between uh, nine and 11 uh, rolls of ABS into this sucker to do it at 250% scale of the original model. Uh, for those who have asked, 250% scale brings it in uh, just a hair over a uh, seventh scale, um, which would be ideal for 10 inch figures. If 10 inch figures existed, I think you'd be roughly somewhere around like maybe 320% scale to get up to, uh, to uh, six, uh, six scale, which would be on par with uh, the big, massive, uber expensive, sell your three kids and uh, a kidney. Um, to the big Blitzway uh, reproduction ecto. But in this particular case, you get the pleasure. Pleasure? Dubious pleasure of building it yourself? Um, no, we'll go with pleasure. Um, you know, I'll take the dubious portion for all the sanding because the sanding, there's just, uh, it's the one aspect of, of building this sort of stuff that I don't like. I don't really know anyone else that likes. Um, this particular time, it was a little bit cathartic. Um, I was able to just kind of sink my brain into it. But um, sanding, 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 and more sanding, and especially on your bumpers and anywhere where trim is going to go, sanding is just super critical. You need to be super critical. When you go to apply this stuff, and you can buy these in different tip sizes, um, I would recommend if you hunt around on Amazon, you could actually get a three pack that comes with three different tip sizes. Do that for this project. That's actually what I've ordered as a follow up because this was the only size I was able to find at my local Hobby Lobby um, because you'll need that fine tip for starting to do some of the chrome trim um, in nooks and crannies on this thing. And I'll give you a close up of where we're at so far. Um, at this point, interior uh, is all painted. The nice part is that I've had enough overspray through the windows into this thing that it gave it a bit of a textured appearance. And once it got a coat of matte black, it actually looks like carpet. So accidental win. Um, but you can see, you know, the chrome finish on the bumper, it comes out really, really slick and clean. Some of my lines are not quite as clean as I would like them. You know, it's a lot of painstaking masking. Uh, to do this, but uh, they're going to get fudged with a little bit of weathering in the nooks and crannies. And so I, I think we'll get away with it and pull it off. So today's chore, I'm going to be pulling the doors back off of this because I want to paint the inside of the door cards. Um, we've got the uh, the exterior decals on it. I'm also going to be working on the roof rack. I want to get it uh, painted up. Um, right now I've got it primed um, as with everything. And uh, base coated in uh, just a basic gunmetal. So I'm going to be going through airbrushing uh, white onto the interior. We'll get everything coated up, let it dry, and then it's going to be time to come back through and start hand uh, brushing everything. Um, so roof rack should be uh, done hopefully by the end of the day. That's my goal. Uh, front seats. Front seats, I used the Molotow on the, uh, on the, the, the uh, um, seat belt buckles. Um, I'm gonna go through, hand paint the seat belts themselves. As far as the, uh, the coating on the seats go, um, I actually went a weird different direction this time through. Um, I went through, uh, did my, my Bondo filler on it, uh, sanded everything just to get layer lines uh, up and out of it. Um, I'm really happy with the way it came out. Don't judge my uh, my Dusty. The shop is uh, a big red dust factory from so much Bondo over the last few weeks. Um, did a couple coats of, pro of, uh, of that standard Rust-Oleum uh, automotive sandable filler primer that I use. 
And then I actually went through and did uh, four coats of um, black plasti dip because um, it just gives it it gives it a, that sheen, um, a little bit of texture, and I think we managed to just kind of mimic a, a, a leather look on it. I'm I'm keen on how it came out, um, and then Molotow over it, so it's done. Um, back seats uh, were both done the exact same way. The uh, the dash was done the exact same way and I've come back through with Maltau on it. Um, it's definitely going to be getting some, uh, some fine tuning brush work. But what I've also done is I've cut, uh, the whole, uh, gauge cluster setup out, cut a hole here, hollowed out that whole chunk. The goal is going to be to go through and make, um, extra gauge screens that will fit in here. And I'll be splicing, uh, extra bulbs in off of the, uh, the existing or, not existing, the soon to be existing uh, wiring setup for this. And so that way the uh, the back gauge cluster will also be lit um, just to give it a little bit of extra oomph. <clears throat> Otherwise, um, I've got a pile of electronics. So the goal today is to lay some paint, do some detail work. And uh, while I'm waiting on paint layers to cure to start laying out uh, LED bulbs and uh, figuring out where they all go, I have not printed any of the housings. Um, vacuum former is supposed to, the DT2 is supposed to show up, uh, here in the next, uh, probably four weeks. Um, in which case then we'll be revisiting, uh, the windshield and, uh, and, uh, and glass for this unit. I, uh, I just, I want it to be a, a little bit thicker. I want, I want it to be thicker. I want to be able to push on it and not have it give and have the shape. So the bucks are at least all done for those. They've all been bondo. They've all been sanded really nice and smooth. That's the other thing. Um, if you are 3D printing bucks for vacuum forming, the sides don't matter. The surface that is going to be the surface of the glass, you ideally want to rotate that buck 90 degrees so that you get your finest finish up and down along that shape. Otherwise, what you have is you have your stacked layer lines on it and congratulations, you now get to do a lot more Bondo and a lot more sanding because that finish has to be smooth, smooth, smooth because any kind of lines that pop through on that, they're gonna transition to your vacuum formed uh, pet G when you go to vacuum form on it. Um, so um, something to be thinking about when and if you decide to go that route. Uh, as far as detail pieces, I'm, Finally getting into the resin game. After this many years of printing, uh, I just, although I've had small use case scenarios in the shop that have popped up from time to time, um, I just haven't wanted to dip my toe into resin printing. Um, so I know next to nothing about it. So I've been doing homework on that on the side, but we've got an Anycubic Mono uh, X, uh, which should be showing up uh, hopefully sometime next month hopefully not into December, but we'll see. Um, so this project is going to continue to drag on uh, because there are things for this project which I just want to print in resin. I think it lends itself more to what those pieces need to be. Things like the proton packs, uh, things like the steering wheel, um, as dialed in as my machines are, and even doing it at 250% scale, uh, there are things that have come off the printer where I've just gone, mm, that doesn't meet the, the standard that I'm aiming for for this particular project. So, um, you know, this is very much a bear with me project. This is a side project. Um, I'm going to film as I go and uh, we'll import, you know, whatever I film that I think might be relevant uh, so that folks can just watch my process and uh, see how it goes. So for those of you that have jumped on the bad wagon and for those of you who have stuck with me, even though I don't have a regular release schedule on these videos, I'm sorry. I think that's probably going to just be the, the motif going forward. I just don't see myself being, um, you know, a regular every Friday guy. It's uh I'm, I'm juggling this into an active, an active shop where I'm pushing out orders for folks and projects like these are my own little project things on the personal project on the side. Um, and I don't tackle projects that are this involved very often, more often than not, you know, they're, they're big sculptures or they're big helmets or they're big pieces. They're things where, um, they don't require this much, uh, detail simply because they are just so time consuming. Um, so this one's a, a special build coming out of the shop. So hopefully you stay tuned. Uh, tell your friends, tell your grandma, 
tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your uncles, tell your sisters. Um, I'd love it if they jumped on, were interested, subscribed, um, you know the drill, hit the bell for notifications and uh, hang with me. And otherwise, um, I'll be show sh I'll be uh, tagging some uh, some photos that I've been taking along the way, and uh, hopefully I'll be queuing in, setting up some cam, and uh, you can kind of follow along with me and my process today. So, cheers! Thanks, guys. Bye.
white. So it's been a few minutes. Um, first base coat of white. Um, as you saw, we got it laid down. You know, it's a bit tricky to uh, get up in the nooks and crannies behind these tanks. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think I probably would have liked to have had this roof, mat, roof rack be um, a few more separate pieces uh, just for uh, to facil facilitate painting on it. Um, the in interior box is all white on this. Uh, uh, exterior skeleton uh, grid work for the rack is going to be black. Um, there's a handful of other colors to get mixed in. Um, the tanks. Uh, you got, you know, this one here, which is kind of like a weird, like, pea green, and uh, these two here that are yellow. Um, just for your own frame of reference, yellow is one of those colors that um, it's it's a pain to paint with. It doesn't want to coat. Typically, it's going to take multiple coats. Um, the one thing that you can do that will give yourself a favor um, is to uh, base coat in white. Um, you know, ideally, your darker colors, they're going to coat much better. Your lighter colors are not. Um and ideally, you want to be think pre 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 gaming your your paint scheme uh, to to lay base coats to help facilitate uh, those colors going on much smoother. So um, we're going to let this sit for just a little bit longer. And uh, there again, you know, when you're doing a base coat on something like this, this is something that's going to end up having a lot of nooks and a lot of grime um, in the nooks and crannies, uh, more so than the main body of the vehicle, simply because it has nooks and crannies for grime to naturally collect in. Um, you know, when you are prepping a, a or planning a paint job like this, um, think about it in a real world use. Um, think about which direction uh, things are going to be potentially flying at it at in, in standard usage scenarios and uh, plan for those being your main layer areas. And so for this, um, you know, just a, a really general quick coat of white is really all that's needed because you're going to be layering other colors in nooks and crannies up above it. And so it being 100% perfect just is not critical in this scenario. Uh, the other thing you may notice too is that I went with a matte white on it. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of using sheens as much as I do colors. Um, it helps differentiate things. And so I think uh, it'll maintain a, a matte white on the box. We'll do a, a, a satin black for powder coat finish, um, mimicking car, uh, uh, um, a powder coat finish, excuse me, on the, um, on the exterior rail system. And then uh, we'll go with uh, shinier colors uh, uh, up and over on the tanks and stuff. So you'll have enough, you know, gloss yellow, um, and chrome uh, or, or silver metallic, excuse me, um, and, and black here and there, uh, to be able to play with light a little bit. And that's what helps, uh, catch the eye and, uh, make things a little bit more visually interesting. But for now, we'll set this off to the side. I'm going to focus on a couple other pieces and then we're going to move on to a weird little tutorial bit. Um, that's something that just popped into my head, something I need to do. And it's something that maybe other folks are not familiar with the technique. So bear with me. Um, I'm going to reset and then uh, we'll do a little bit of detail painting on these other pieces and then we'll move on. Thank you. 
So um, I'm sitting here looking at uh, my plan for the car gauges. Uh, you know, obviously it's easy enough to uh, uh, just get yourself a, any any clear plastic you've got floating around, sit, size it to shape, cut it to where it'll fit down into the hole. Um, quick and dirty cheat for uh, car gauges. At this point, I just hopped online, looked for a set of car gauges that I liked, got rough measurements, spread it out in a handful of different sizes real quick. You can really fill a whole sheet with them. Move around until you find the one that you like. You'll trim it out. Uh, once you've got it trimmed out, you can go on the back side of it. Since it's uh, standard eight and a half by 11, you can clearly see the lines for your gauges. Go through, uh, color in black anywhere that's not around the gauge to help block light transmission. And then you can glue those gauges in just with a, a little light tack of, uh, of Elmer's uh, and, uh, or glue stick. Just glue it right to the back side of that. And then you've got yourself a set of uh, primitive little gauges that'll show up. So um, let me fiddle faddle with this and then I'll show you what it looks like. So um, after fiddle faddling with it a couple of times, that's basically where the, uh, the gauges are at. Um, I ended up actually just taking an extra strip of uh, leftover ABS line and using it for trim chrome trimming it out. Um, there'll be a little bit more cleanup there, but uh, it's uh, close enough to get the job done. You'll be able to slide some LEDs right up through the hole, get just a little bit of subtle backlight behind it, just enough to give you that extra dynamic. So I think we're in good shape there. We'll move on to the other parts.
All right. <clears throat> All right. And on that note, I think I am going to call it because I'm starting to chase my own tail. Um, <laughs> we'll do a little bit of uh, touch up and clean up tomorrow, and then we're going to move on to uh, black hoses. We need to uh, silver out the siren. We need to uh, silver out the gauges here. Um, we need to uh, touch this red line up, let it dry, remask, do another secondary uh uh, red line uh, at the top of this sucker here and then um, we'll probably do another coat of yellow probably one more coat of pea green um, and then uh, we'll get down and start doing some weathering on this sucker but uh, I think I have had uh, about enough fun for one day so uh, just a quick recap for uh, where we are at today let me make sure nothing's open um front bench seat um is uh is done and weathered um rear seat is done and weathered other rear seat is done and weathered it's funny there's no seat belts in either of these two um, rear control box is mostly done and weathered. I think I'm probably going to, uh, uh end up coming and doing a little bit more on this. Um, these are all first passes too. Goal is kind of let them dry. Anytime that I'm doing any kind of switches or buttons, I'll go through, lay my colors, let them set up overnight, and I'll come back through with a gloss tomorrow. And that way we can shine them up and that, that'll give them a little bit of sheen. Um, so that'll be it for that. Uh, Got another uh, random box. This one I'm pretty happy with. I think we'll probably just leave it as is. Um, same goes for this one. I'm, uh, I'm pretty content with it. Um, just for a little bit of oomph, a little bit of decoration. Um, we've got our uh, gauges in, which something has totally gone sideways there. I wonder why that is. Okay, well, chances tomorrow I'm going to be pulling up, pulling the sucker apart and uh, redoing it. Um, I don't know that I was overly happy with it today anyway, to be honest. Um, and in fact, the more I look at it, the more... No, I'm not too terribly happy about it. For it being something really small that most people are not ever going to look at, um, it bothers me just enough that... Yeah, no, we'll definitely be... Uh, Coming back to it, and this sucker here, I just don't, uh, I don't even want to touch. I need to just, uh, it's one of those where, you know, sooner or later you've, you've, you've pushed it as far as you can, and the paints are still just wet enough that you start chasing your own tail, and you just need to just stop, take a breather, and walk away. But, um, I would say, you know, we are, uh, certainly getting there little bit by little bit. So, I'll be glad to, uh, see this sucker come to fruition. Um, Tomorrow or Sunday, um, we'll be moving on to uh, this major control panel. Um, it's hollow. It's going to have a whole couple holes drilled because a whole slew of fiber optic bundles actually get fed all the way up through and will take the place of these buttons and lights. Um, and same for the front. The front I've already got uh, opened up. There'll be a little control screen here. Um, so uh, this thing will get... Uh, once we tackle what we want to open up here, because we're certainly not going to do all of them, it's going to be a mixture of paint and lights. Um, once we've got that all opened up, then we'll talk about, you know, base coating and inner coating uh, on the sucker. So this will be uh, the main time consuming project for the uh, for the next episode. Um, and that's where we're at. Um, for anybody, I highly doubt, that has actually managed to make it this far, I'm sorry. I know that it was uh, really long-winded. I did double speed on what I was doing, but I uh, had so many people clamoring, you know, wanting to just watch me work and watch how I tackle stuff. Um, uh, I, a uh, a um, wet palette is uh, super critical. If you don't know what a wet palette is, you can make your own. Um, it's super awesome for uh, mm -hmm. doing... Uh, your paints and keeping them wet long term. Um, most everything that I do, I'm thinning it with uh, airbrush thinner. Um, you know, just a couple of the ratios, probably maybe like one fifth airbrush thinner. 
um, try to get it about to the consistency of milk and that way it kind of spreads and goes where I want it to go. Um, sometimes it's a little bit too thin, but I would much have it. I'd rather have it be th too thin because it, it takes some of the work out and you'll notice a lot of times I'm, I'm taking most of the paint right back off of my brush so that it is controllable. Um, it's just my own method. Um, for just being able to paint, get paint down quick and dirty. Um, and you'll see me come back through, do two coats, three coats, uh, more often than not. I'm not a fan of just glooping paint on and doing, uh, doing, trying to get it all done in one shot. It will bite you in the butt almost every time. So, um, cheers. Hopefully everybody has a good night to those who, uh, stuck through this whole thing. Um, hopefully you learned something. Um, if you have questions or if there's something you different that you'd like to see or suggestions, um, please leave them in the comments. Um, I guess I could just uh, pan this up and stare at the camera a little bit. You're probably sick and tired of looking at the uh, table anyway. So, um, yeah, you know, if, uh, if you've got thoughts, if you've got things that you'd rather see, um, or, you know, things you'd like to see more of or close ups of, um, let me know, you know, at the end of the day, this is uh, not for me. This is for you guys that are out there watching. Um, the goal is to try and just impart what I know. And that way you just kind of get a general vibe of, uh, of workflow that's going on the table. Um, uh, you know, I'm speeding up the working portions, uh, and not inserting dialogue because it just doesn't need to be, you know, an hour long monologue. And I think at this point, um, I've been, taking video, dropping it off my phone and throwing it on the computer and then coming back and shooting the next step. Um, and I know this episode's going to be a long one where I think it's the longest I've filmed to date. I think we're probably going to end up being close to an hour and a half. Um, and I think that's good enough for this episode. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. You know, this, like I said, this is going to be a really long, long winded uh, project. It's going to stretch out. I fully anticipate fully to December and uh, videos are just going to keep popping up here and there. Um, so if you're digging the, the project, uh, you know, and you're not subscribed, please uh, take the time to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Um, it helps me and it motivates me to continue uh, taking the time to set the, the camera gear to, uh, to shoot this stuff. Um, and uh, if you got any questions and you don't know how to get a hold of me through all the things that I'm in, um, you know, the, the, my different social medias are linked in the banner for the channel. Um, otherwise leave me a comment and, uh, I do my best to try and get back to everybody who, uh, who does chime in, chime in. Sorry. Now I know I'm getting tired. I haven't anything to eat all day long. So on that note, hope everybody, hope everybody has a good night and, uh, I will see you guys on the next episode of the Ecto one builds. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>